Dallas, David. Didn't get to do a video shoot yesterday. Had a bunch going on and um, had a ton of stuff going on today. Posted some dogs up earlier for sale. Uh, nine dogs. Got one left out of those nine. If anybody's looking for a dog. Um, and uh, been a busy day at the kennels. I've got two mama dogs fixing to have puppies. Uh, they're in uh, early labor now. And I'm out here on the tractor. Figured I'd take a break for a minute, but I'm out here cutting some uh, lanes and, and doing some maintenance work that you have to do to keep things rolling along. But I wanted to talk about a series. We're down to basically three more in this series. And today I wanted to talk about uh, size of dogs, 13, 15 inches, the two classifications that uh, beagle hounds are known in. Uh, that's what people compete in. And uh, what that means is anything that is 13 inches or under is in the 13 inch class and anything that is over 13 but no bigger than 15 uh, is in the 15 inch class when they're running field trials and that sort of thing that's what they they label them as a 13 or 15 so uh, for instance uh, the where they take their measurement is at the willows of the dog and you say, well, what is the willows? The willows is the shoulder where it starts to go up to the neck. So at the bottom of the neck on the shoulders, you measure from the ground to that, and that gives you your uh, height of the dog. And so a lot of people are really uh, sticklers on what size dogs they run. They have preferences. There's a lot of uh, theories, I think, that go into it that Sometimes I understand and sometimes I don't. I've had people that call me and go, David, I don't care if the dog is the best jump dog there's ever been. If it's not, uh, if it's under 14 inches, I won't buy it. I won't even look at it. And uh, it's like, okay. Uh, I've had other people that say, hey, I'm running a 15 inch dogs. And so I need something 15 inches because the 13 inch dogs can't keep up. And, um, I always laugh inside at that. I don't try to make fun of anybody, but you think about that for a minute. When you see people line up to run a race, whether it's a marathon, whether it's a hundred yards, you know, dash, a sprint, whatever you're talking about, does the guy that's six five have a better chance of winning than the guy that's five eight? That has nothing to do with it. It has to do with the speed and the, and the and the and the speed at which someone runs. And the same thing's true of a dog. I've had dogs that were 12 inches that could run with, with 15 inch dogs without any problem. There's pros and cons to everything you do. You look at a 13 inch dog and you say, well, that dog, if he's 13 inches or under, he can get up in the briars better. I've heard that before. Uh, I always feel like that if you've got a 15 inch dog that's got the determination and the drive and desire, he'll find a way to get under the briars. Now, it may not look as pretty. It may look like a bulldozer, but that really doesn't matter to me. I don't care if he goes in there and looks like a tornado if he produces a rabbit. That's all good with me. Um, the only time where I would see a bigger dog ha is at a disadvantage would be if you're in a brush pile and you've got a smaller hole, a uh, 15-inch dog might not fit in the same hole a 13-inch or under dog would. So I I'll, I'll give them that one. Um I've had people that say they run in the swamps. They want the bigger dogs with the longer legs. I get that. I understand that. Another reason some people would want a bigger dog. I've heard both versions of it. I've heard, hey, I want a big dog because I run in the snow. I need something with long legs that can run through the snow. I've heard other guys that run in the snow say, I want a smaller dog that can stay on top of the snow. It doesn't weigh as much, and it's a smaller dog, and it'll go across top of the snow better. I don't hunt in the snow like that. I'm down here in Mississippi, so I really can't give you an answer on that one. I can just tell you there's a whole variance of opinions when it comes to size of dogs. And some guys are really hung up on it, and some guys aren't. And, you know, it's just like we talked about uh, the different colors of dogs. I think we've covered that. If not, we'll cover it now. You know, there's all kinds of different colors of dogs. There's blue ticks, red ticks, red and white, uh, solid red. There's black and tans. There's tricolors. There's black and white. There's lemon. There's lemon and white, lemon ticked. Uh, there's uh, even some that they call silver. So there's a variance of dogs. I've got chocolate, chocolate red ticks and solid chocolate dogs. So there's a variance of colors and a variance of sizes of, of beagle hounds. 
And of course, if one's over 15 inches, it's totally disqualified from being able to compete in field trials uh, where they have a 15 inch class because anything above 15 doesn't doesn't get allowed. Now I have heard that there are some I've never experienced and I'm not a field trialer. I have experienced, uh, talked to some people that have said they experienced some dogs that if they know how to go through the measuring device, which I looked that up and I could not find a name that they call it. I, I Google searched and tried to find what is the name of the measuring device used at field trials. And all they said was measuring device. And it's just, uh, it's just basically a U-shaped tool uh, goes up and uh, comes straight across with a bar and goes straight down. And the dog walks under it and they have a little thing that drops down on the willows and they, uh, they secure that. And then they give out a measurement. I mean, it's like, Hey, this dog is 13 and three eighths. This dog is 13 and a quarter. And they write all that down. And, uh, so if a dog is 13 and an eighth, it cannot compete in 13 inch, but some of them may know how to duck down just a little bit. Kind of like we used to sometimes I tease about this. It used to, uh, your kids, they're not quite tall enough to ride the ride. And, uh, maybe as a parent, you're like really wanting to get them to ride the ride. So you tell them, Hey, just stand up a little on your tippy toes, just a little bit, get that extra quarter, half inch. And now you can ride the ride. Um, Probably wasn't the best parenting we did, but I'm sure that a lot of us been there and done that. And sometimes the kid would get caught. They tell them, nope, you can't, you can't ride the ride, buddy. You got to stand flat footed. Um, but the whole point to all of this about sizes and colors and all that is simply this. God made all of us different. There is not one single person that is identically the same unless you're identical twins. And even then, sometimes you can tell a difference. I, I happen to have a set of what they call mono twins as granddaughters. Uh, they were born and uh, shared one placenta. They have identical DNA. and um, But one of them has a little birthmark on, uh, on the side in her hair that if you look real close, you can see. Uh, my daughter has also had her ears pierced and put a different uh, color of uh, earring in. So that helps some of us that can't tell as quickly. But they're probably going to, I call them double trouble. They're probably going to be a lot of trouble as they as they get older, uh, faking people out on who's who. But my point to all this is this. God has made a lot of different colors in people. God has made a lot of different sizes in people. And yet we're all people. You don't go, well, hey, that's not a person. You know, they're uh, they're Hispanic or they're Asian. They're not really a person. No, they're a person. Everybody's a person. And the Bible says that man is made in the image of God. Now, it did not say a white man is made in the image of God, a black man is made in the image of God, or a Asian, a Hispanic man. It said man. That means all. All men are made in the image of God. So if you want to go out here and be prejudiced against any race or color of people, you're going against the scripture, obviously. And uh, I know that's uh, not always a popular topic, but it's the truth. The truth is not always popular. But um, there are uh, a lot of different, uh, different beagles out there uh, that have different colors, different mouths. Um, you know, you've got chop mouth, ball mouth, squealy mouth. Uh, I had one that we, I called it a, a rolling. He sounded like he had a roll to him, like a yodel, a quivering bark. Um, but yet when they all get together, it's kind of like a choir. When you mix people together in a choir, you don't want all bass. You don't want all soprano. So you've got altos, you've got bass, you've got tenor, you've got uh, soprano. But when you put them all together, and they blend together, you have a beautiful noise. And when you run these beagle hounds, I, I laugh sometimes because some people get so hung up on the color of a dog. And they go, man, I, you know, I just, I, I just, I, they're, you tell them a blue tick. I told a guy a blue tick one time. No, nope, not interested. Uh, never have owned a good blue tick. <laughs> and I just laugh because there is sorry in every color of dog. And there's good in every color of dog. Guess what? There's sorry in every race and, and ethnic group of human beings. There's sorry in all of them, but there's also good in all of them. 
And so our job as Christians is to accept each other as we are, no matter what our size is, no matter what color we are, and understand that if we will walk this walk together down here, together, it'll be a beautiful noise to the Lord. So I just want to encourage everyone to look past the size. In the beagle world, some of these people are hung up on one inch, one and a half, two inch difference in dogs, and that's really going to make them make a final decision on a dog. Really should be based on the drive and the hunt and the ability of the dog, not what size it is, not what color it is. Now, I realize we all as beaglers have preferences on what size dogs we run. They've got a pocket beagle that's sometimes nine inches. I personally would never have a nine-inch dog. Now, my reasoning behind that is I'm not saying that nine-inch dog can't run a rabbit. I'm just saying that for me, I would never keep one of those because I would not breed it. If it's a really small dog, I don't want to breed that to one of my bigger males and, and have complications. It's one of my main reasons, but I also want... Uh, that's a drastic change in a beagle hound from a 9-inch to a 14-inch dog. Um, and I don't know that they could keep up all that well. They might. It all depends on the deal. I've learned a long time ago, it's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. So you remember, God said in the Bible that if you have the faith of a grain of mustard seed, that's a very small amount of faith, that you can move mountains. So we, we face big problems sometimes, but our God is a bigger God than that. So we need to realize that we need to not get hung up on size, whatever the size of the problem is, no matter what, what people accept people, whatever color. Let's look at truly what Martin Luther King said, if we could just get to that, that we can be judged by the content of our character and not the color of our skin. I, that, that is such a strong statement. Yet that's not what's going on in today's world. If it was, a whole lot of this mess wouldn't be like it is. So I challenge you to accept one another, where we are, whatever size we are, fat, skinny, tall, short, whatever color we are, we need to get along. We're in this walk together. We are God's creatures. We're down here on earth, and we're all trying to get to the same thing. And, and we can get there if we, if, we, if we would just get together, we can get there a lot easier and uphold our brother. And, and I encourage you today to just look around you and accept people and, and don't just look at the outside. You know, the Bible says that man looks on the outside, but God looks on the heart. Let's get our hearts right and let's check the people around us by their heart. Not by the not by the outside, and we'll be more Christ-like if we do that. I hope this has been a blessing to you. We've got two more that I know of. We're going to do. Uh, we're going to do one on field trial dogs, and we're going to do one on hunting dogs. And so, I uh, if anybody does know a name for that measuring device they use at field trials, feel free to put that in the comments because I did look and I couldn't find it. I'll be the first to tell you I'm not up on all the field trial stuff. Never been to one to have my dog measured. But uh, that would be an interesting thing if if uh, if someone could uh, could tell me that. Um, but uh, when I looked it up, they just called it a measuring device, which I thought that was pretty uh, basic uh, and simple, which is the way I like things. But anyhow, y'all have a great day, and we will come at you again hopefully tomorrow.